This is one of the most requested videos on this channel. This is for beginners. If you are brand new to digital drawing, want to draw on a computer for the very first time and you don't know where to start, this video is for you. So where to start? I've broken down this video into three chunks. The first chunk is basic drawing tablets. Anything that you can connect to a computer that you already own that you can draw on to get started with. These come in all different sizes and price points and different kinds. And so I'm gonna be just kind of giving you an overview of that. The second part is kind of the higher end tablets, the all in ones. These are tablets that already have an operating system installed. For example, the Apple iPad or the Surface Pro, things like that. And the third chunk, I want to talk briefly, very briefly, about software. You need a program you can draw in. Where do you start? So let's hit part one running. Plugging a tablet into your computer. There are two main kinds. The first and the least expensive is your standard pen tablet. As you move the pen around the tablet, a line appears on your screen. These have the added benefit of also being very accurate compared to a mouse and they are pressure sensitive. That means that the harder you press on your tablet with your pen, the thicker your line gets on your screen or the more paint flows out of your brush that you're using on the screen. It's pretty nifty. Getting used to looking at your screen while drawing down in front of your screen takes some time. You have to develop that hand-eye coordination, but it can totally be done. Some of the best artists working in the world today use tablets like these. You can also find some of these for well under $50. I have a review also of an entry-level Wacom Intuos Draw tablet on my channel. It's about $70. It's a little more expensive, but you're getting the Wacom brand name. Now, I can't go into detail of each and every one of these tablets here in this video because I want to cover a lot of ground shortly. But if you want to see a breakdown of these kinds of tablets, go ahead, check out my website. I'll put a card here in the video, or you can just check the description down below. Now, if you're like me and you want to see your drawings as you draw them, a screen-based tablet might be more your style. In some ways, these work similarly to the other tablets, but instead of drawing on something that's sitting in front of you, you are drawing directly on the screen. So you can see the pen or the paint flowing out as you draw. The downside here is these cost more. In fact, they can cost significantly more. You're probably looking at starting for the very, very low end in the mid 200s to $300 range. And the cost can go well up into the thousands. The top of the line here is usually Wacom. That's the brand to watch to see what the most expensive, highest quality stuff out there is. If you want the best, it's usually a pretty safe bet to start looking there. But the good news here is there are a slew of competitors out there. It seems like every month a new one pops up. Uji, Huion, XP Pen, Artisol, Geoman. I know I'm missing one or maybe eight, but those alternatives are getting better and better all the time. And they're far cheaper. It's not unusual to find them for a half or even a third of the price of some of the higher end competitors out there. There are some trade-offs. For example, many of these have issues with parallax. That's when your pen tip hits the screen and where the cursor appears underneath that pen tip can be off a little bit. That throws a lot of artists and they don't like that. Or you might find in some of these more inexpensive tablets that they have a little bit of wobble in their diagonal line. So if you're looking for slow, precise lines, that can throw you off as well. I actually spend a a lot of time here on this channel reviewing tablets just like this. So I'm gonna include a link here and also down below and to some of the ones that I have tested. Part two, self-contained tablets. This is your Surface Pro, your iPad Pro, some Android tablets and other Windows tablets. These are all in one. Buying a Windows tablet is like buying a laptop that you can draw on. It's pretty handy. Same with the iPad. You don't need to hook it up to a computer to use it. Already comes with an operating system. You just have to go out, buy some drawing apps and you're off to the races. What are the pros and cons? Well, the the best part about these is definitely the portability. Grabbing a tablet like this, taking it with you is so nice. Most of these things will stay charged for hours and hours. So if you want to draw at the park or on the bus or even just sit on a couch in another room, these are great for that. The downside is definitely the cost. These are going to cost you. Be ready to spend, I would say, between $800 and $1,000 to get something good. Yeah, you can find stuff cheaper out there, but eh, I don't know. If you want to get a Windows tablet for drawing, I would recommend spending even more than the kind of $800 minimum, something with a little bit more RAM. Otherwise, you might get frustrated on how slow it runs. The iPad Pro, the Surface Pro, Surface Book, they look like a good price at first, but then you have to pay extra for other things. For example, if you want a pen, 
Both the Surface Pro and iPad Pro don't come with pens. If you want a cover or a keyboard with it, that also is extra. So this sort of thing starts to add up. The good news here is there are a bunch of Windows Surface clones that have been popping up all over the place and there's even more coming out next year and they're starting to see the prices fall on those non-Windows branded tablets. I haven't had the chance to review many of them yet. That's something I want to chip away at next year, but I do have a list. Guess where? Yup, my website, link down below. So here we go to part three let's talk a little bit about software. To draw on your computer, you're gonna need an app to actually draw in. Good news here is that there are dozens and dozens and dozens of apps out there that will meet anybody's taste. If you want something simple without a lot of stuff in it, I would recommend Sketchable on Windows. You could also check out Procreate for the iPad. I like both of these apps. They don't have as many tools as some of the higher end apps, but if you're just looking to get started in drawing, a lot of that interface stuff and confusing stuff just stays out of your way. Now, if you wanna go high end, pro grade software with all the bells and whistles, check out Photoshop. It's really expensive, monthly cost associated with it. Or you can check out something like Affinity Designer, one-time cost, significantly cheaper, but definitely professional grade software. Downside of this is there's much more of a learning curve to software like this, even though you can do a lot more with it. If you're just getting started and you want something kind of like Photoshop, but cheaper? Check out Clip Studio. It's great. You can usually find it on sale. There are other apps out there too, like Sketchbook Pro, Paint Tools Sci. Both of those have really passionate followings out there. Let's say you're totally broke because you just spent all your money on one of the tablets I mentioned above. Well, check out Medibank Paint. Totally free and not too shabby either. Also, it's available on Mac, Windows, iPad, Android, everything. I'm probably even missing an operating system. So that's my 101. There is a lot more to learn from here. I'm always reviewing new stuff all the time. If you want to keep up to date on everything drawing, hit the subscribe button down below. Or if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Speaking of reviews, I will be back soon. I've got a couple of reviews. Well, two, maybe three reviews coming up in the next few weeks, and I'm going to see you guys then.